Akira, I know we were talking about this before the show started, so please take it away. It's sadly the new normal in this Yeah, country. well, I mean, you were just talking about money and politics, and I think that this draws a direct, uh, you know, this is a, a direct example of what happens when our political system is flooded with money. So, you know, uh, just a little background before I get into the core of the story, which is about um, school children doing basically mass, su- mass shooting drills um, in their schools. Just a little, a little background, in case you guys haven't caught yourselves up on the numbers Um, As of December 12th of this year, 409 mass shootings have occurred. Um, uh, They fit the inclusion criteria, uh, which I believe is four uh, four deaths uh, that could include the shooter as well. Um, This averages 1.22 mass shootings per day. In these shootings, uh, uh, 1,466 people were injured and 441 people have died for a total of 1,907 victims. And um, since the devastating massacre at Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999, the United States has seen more than 230 school shootings, not including ones at colleges and universities, according to data from Washington Post, which is extremely alarming. Can I very quickly quote The Onion? Yeah. Uh, we can't do anything about this, says the says the only country where this ever happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> my God. No, but I mean, oh yeah, let's let's because hang that's on, because the headline. quotes we're going to be looking at are very difficult. To right. Hear. Absolutely. So ninety five percent of American schools now conduct drills to prepare students for a school shooter. For adults who were out of high school by the time of the nineteen ninety nine Columbine shooting, this is an unfamiliar phenomenon. We don't have a clear picture of how the drills are experienced by the children they were designed for. Well, until now. Slate and The Trace spoke to more than 20 students from different parts of the country to learn what they see, hear, and feel during what has become a routine experience in American schools. Every school performs the drills in a different way, and every child experiences them alone. But even the younger students know better than we might expect what the drills are for. Here are their stories. So if you actually go to the story in the link um, that, that we post, you can listen to the account uh, actually from the children themselves. And we're talking kindergartners up to 10th graders. It is heartbreaking. Um, it's one of the first stories I read today when I was picking my stories for the day, and it moved me to tears. And so I, I had to share it with everybody. So I, I chose a few of the excerpts um, that I thought were particularly you know, jarring. Um, So fifth grader Phoebe from New Jersey said, I repeat, this is a code red lockdown drill. I was so scared. I stood on top of the toilet. But then I remembered my teacher told me this year to sit on the toilet and put my feet up. And then last year, my teacher told me to stand on the toilet. So I was like, wait, what do I do? I was panicking. Then I heard footsteps outside. I was like, oh my gosh, is someone coming? I tried to stay as quiet as I could be. I just hear footsteps, click, clack, click, clack. And then I heard the shifting of the doorknob and I was like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I was just hoping, hoping that it was not the, uh, that it was the principal coming, not anybody who was going to kill me. Sixth grader Colin from Los Angeles said, if an active shooter went on, you're supposed to like grab kind of a blunt object to protect yourself with. If someone were to come at you, you like either like throw it at them to slow them down, or if you're close to them, you just whack them in the head with it, or if you were to grab a pencil, it's pretty self-explanatory, you just stab. I was just thinking, well, who's going to win? Someone with a rifle or someone with a textbook? Fifth grader Kennedy Ball- uh, from Baltimore said, we were all sitting under the sink and under the shelves, so it was kind of uncomfortable because everyone in class was there. Everyone was kind of fidget- fidgety, and our teacher told us not to move. One kid, he was kind of worried and thought it was real, so he had a panic attack. He started breathing heavily and crying, and everyone was really worried about him. So then we had waited for a few minutes, and then everyone started to calm him down, like, it's okay, it's okay, it's just fake, we're just practicing. One kid, he's really funny, he said, it's okay, man, it's okay, cool your beans. Everyone started laughing. And then kindergartner Leah from Portland, Oregon, Oregon said, last week there was a real stranger in the building. We saw it on the security cameras and I was very frightened and I got a, a feeling stuck in my head about, I was thinking if we were gonna be okay because the stranger was literally just outside the door of our classroom. And it was actually just our principal dressed in stranger clothes. I saw her wearing like a boy wig with her hair up in a bun. She had like a white shirt, a green tank top and some like grayish bluish pants. I thought it was kind of scary because I didn't know who her true self was. So 
Um, yeah, so that is the state of our schools today. And um, if this makes you uncomfortable, just know that uh, the NRA spent $144.3 million on outside spending, such as independent expenditures, um, in, our, uh, in our elections uh, since 1998. During that period, uh, in addition, the NRA uh, has spent a cumulative $45.9 million on federal lobbying, both for its in-house operations and outside consultants. And if you add it all up, candidate and party contributions, independent expenditures, and lobbying, the NRA has spent $203.2 million on political activity since 1998. $60 million of that in 2016 alone. So every time I hear these stories, I get more and more annoyed and almost laugh in a morbid way about the just the absurdity of the situation that we're in. We have just somehow found a way to bring back the duck and cover drills, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. and here's the thing that I I've kind of decided personally, but it's I don't have data, but it's my personal gut feeling. These drills are actually hurting kids more than the shootings. In giving terms them of, probably PTSD. It's giving kids PTSD. For sure. It's teaching kids to be terrified. It's teaching. It's increasing their amygdalas, which is going to increase the amount of, on average, conservative uh, mindsets. Ideologies. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, this is. It's just like okay. Here, you know what you could do. You could really do that would save money, and save more kids, and pu- and have kids have a better outcome. Uh, stop these goddamn drills. They're not helping anyone. And I want to remind everyone that if you're the shooter in this situation, you're probably also a kid at that school, which means you know how these drills work, which means the training, you already understand it and therefore can get around it. Smart. Uh, second, here's what you could do that would be more helpful. Get police out of schools. Police have never stopped a school shooting. In fact, when a school shooting's happen, for the most part, they cower outside and don't do a damn thing. Like park them is they're not at all required to protect and serve you in any way, shape, or form. So, and but they have put a million kids through the school to prison pipeline over many things. I just saw a video a few days ago of a police officer slamming a twelve year old yep. on the ground. But that's acceptable. We don't have to have a drill about police abusing their powers. We just have to do a drill that sets up rules and regulations to try and trick the person who's attacking. Like, why the hell is the principal coming in with a wig? It's, it's a student. So weird. It's gonna be a student. It's gonna be someone you know who knows how these drills work. This is. Grade A stupid, and the same way that we look back on the duck and cover drills and say, what were they doing? They're putting kids through this when getting under a desk isn't going to do a damn thing about a nuke. We're going to look back and say, look at how cowardly our government was, that it would rather spend the money to teach kids or put kids through these traumatic experiences over and over again than just deal with the guns. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... I don't know what I could really add into this conversation except get money out of politics, all right? The NRA is a large organization, and they're they're able to buy our politicians, Democrat and Republican, Mm -hmm. in the United States Senate, in the United States House, at the state level, at the county level, at the city level. we got to get money out of politics because nothing's going to be done so long as the NRA and its lobby groups can basically continue to, excuse me, buy our politicians. Absolutely. This is how corrupt our system is. I only can imagine really the long-term damage. I don't even know. Perhaps I don't know if people are doing research on this or not, but the long-term damage that's going to happen to these students is that they're going to have this mentality. They're going to be emotionally scarred by this. They're going to be suffering PTSD for a very, very long time in regards to these uh, drills and these shootings. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you, you only just captured an excerpt of just a few people that were interviewed. They did 20 right? interviews. Tw- 20 and interviews. They think, are think about startling. who else is out there. I mean... Th- think about uh, how many others have stories to tell and, and just how crazy some of these drills really are. really smart. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, you, you listen to them speak, and they're they're fully aware of what's going on, like to your point, Daniel. And then also, Daniel, you mentioned the police presence in school. It's really kind That's of That's more dangerous. It's like a, well, it's kind of like a, a, a sort of self-fulfilling, like, circular, like, prophecy. It's like, oh, well, we need more of a police presence in our schools because of all these mass shootings. And then there's police abuse as well to students, and usually black and brown students. Students, let's be real honest. Yeah. And um, I, I think that all around our schools are becoming these very, very scary and, and, and frequently, you know, dangerous spaces and, and, and scary not for any other reason than we're, we're yeah. pretending to protect our children. 
okay, with so, these drills. And I, so so, and these, wanna, so these kids should not yeah. be going through this. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, why are we doing this? We have the ability to stop this, and we're smarter than this. And by the way, I want to add into <clears throat> all this that this is at a time where schools don't have any money because they're not getting funded. So they're taking their already minimal budgets, and they're spending a huge amount of that on police, who, again— Put a million kids. I don't think there's any question statistically that police and schools have done more damage to American students than shooters. I'm, I, I don't have. To, I don't know if the body count is as high on both. I know that police have killed students in schools, and I. But I know that all the time they will abuse, sometimes sexually, students. But there's a. You know, there seems to be a cop in every school now. So. How is that going to work out in the long run? Yeah, uh, you know, again, it's it's crazy that in America the cops are still to statistically more scary than the students. They yeah, scare me crazy. a lot. And um, also, just uh, you know, just so everybody is aware of presently what our legislators are doing about any sort of gun legislation, <laughs> nothing. No, uh, legislation is passed by the House. Has been sitting on McConnell's desk for six months. Um, Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer and McConnell and Trump were blo- uh, says that McConnell and Trump are blocking meaningful, meaningful action on gun violence. The two bills require background checks on virtual, virtually all gun sales and close the loophole that allows gun applications to automatically go through if a background check is not completed within three days. And many of the shooters, including, I believe, the El, Pas- El Paso shooter, would have been stopped with this legislation. Hey, but Kira, the only way to stop a bad kid with a gun there's a good kid with a gun. Yeah, that's right. Let's arm yeah. all of our children. All right. NRA has. Do you remember when? Um, what's his name? Did the um the guy that did Ali G Borat? What's his name again? Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did that thing where he uh, was trying to sell that? Yeah. This is. They're already thinking that. A gun that. and a teddy bear. Yes. Yeah. Do we have to do the what? Kindergarten. It makes me think of the South Park episode yeah. Yeah. Uh, where everybody has a gun in South Park. Right. And everybody in the like the football stadium. Yeah all takes out their guns and everybody's just pointing it around and then the episode ends and nobody gets shot and we're like well shit what was the like what was the message <laughs> yeah but here's here's the other one i remember when i was in the south with someone who um, used to be a friend of mine but we've you know, been basically strange since then but i remember they have like a hunting area you know very southern uh, they have a hunting area i went turkey shooting with them and so they were going and they had these neighbors and they were talking about how it was so annoying that these neighbors of theirs would keep stealing their electricity. And I was like, you know, thinking in, I don't know, a city mindset, I suppose. Why don't you just, you know, talk to them and try and do something? It's like, well, well they have guns. And, you know, we want to keep our distance from each other. <sighs> and we had just, like, on the car right there, we had had, like, an argument where I was like, that doesn't, it doesn't seem like the good way to make good neighbors is to have guns. Uh, because you'll reduce conversation, which increases incidences, and their entire point was, no, 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 that's not the case. Increases it, distrust, too. It, which increases it, yeah. distrust, oh, and then I literally have a situation where there's someone sitting power that they're terrified to confront because mm-hmm. they have weapons, and I'm like, there you go. Yep. Wonderful. Oh Give that man a can of SpaghettiOs. Mm-hmm.